Hey everybody, this is Tyson again with HHO for Life. I uh, hope all of you guys are having fun and experimenting and doing good things. Um, just wanted to share another uh, video with you. This one is going to kind of explain what I'm doing with my new design so you guys have an idea as to what I'm doing. Because I know a lot of you are anxious to hear it. Um, okay, first of all, my design definitely has to do with heat. As you saw in my video, my last video that I posted, um, I uh, made the comment that there's almost no bubbling happening. And then I, sh then I opened up my fuel line and my car didn't die and I closed it and my car didn't die. Well, at the time I didn't know what was going on. I uh, checked my valve to see if it was leaking and it definitely was not leaking. Um, I actually pulled the hose off to see and nothing was leaking past my valve at all. And then I reached down and I felt my container. And my vaporizer container was warm. Um, it was actually getting kind of hot. And this was on a warm day. Um, and what, ha what had happened is because of the warm weather outside and because of the heat that was coming off of my engine, it heated up my container. And it did not, al it did not allow it to get cold because um, it the uh, air that was being sucked in was hot air from my engine, uh, from the heat coming off my engine. Well, I discovered at that time, um, oh, what had also happened is the gas level in my container got lower than the downpipe that was in my container submerged under the gas, so it was no longer submerged under the gas. Um, my son's over here playing with his little toy but uh anyway um it wasn't submerged under the gas all that was happening is the heat from the engine um heated up my container and it created vapor gasoline vapor through heat and i discovered that um at that time and so i uh the next day it was a pretty nice day as well I decided to do a test run to test the mileage on it and I uh, let my car warm up for about 20 minutes and then I shut my fuel off going to my car and uh, opened up uh, um, the air for my vaporizer. I connected the, the pipe um, to my air intake, um, the, vaporize, the pipe going to my vaporizer um, and so I went on a uh, test run. I actually I went 19 point like six eight miles. I think it was, um, and when I left, I had measured the level of my gasoline, um, and then when I came back, I dumped it out because I dumped. I uh, what I had done is I I got um, a uh, one of those little measuring cups that have two cups in them, and I poured that into my container. And uh, then I did the, my test run. I went the, like the 19.68 miles, and then I got back and I dumped it back out into that same container um, to see. Actually, first dumped it out into a different container, and then into that two cup container. And I had only used um, about a cup of gas, just barely, barely over a cup of gas. Um, and so that's where I got my results. I didn't have like a specific milliliter measurement device or anything like that. That's why I say it was between a cup and a cup and a half of gas, um, just to be safe. That way I can say it's between 214 and 320 miles per gallon. Um, obviously I'm going to have to do more testing. I'm going to have to do a lot more mileage tests and then I'm going to have to average the results so that I have a, have consistent data. Um, because I haven't done enough tests on this yet to know whether that would be a consistent miles mileage per gallon range. Um, so I'm in the process of building this new design so that... Um, my, well, my son's picking on my other son. Anyway, miles per gallon range. Um, okay, I lost my train of thought. But anyway, I'll uh, explain my uh, the design that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to get a, du a double insulated container, okay? 
And I'm doing this so that this the inside of my container stays as warm as it possibly can. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna get my container and then put another container inside of it. Basically, I'm gonna put a can inside of a can. Okay, but it's gonna be tight. There's only gonna be about a quarter of an inch gap or so in between both cans. And then what I'm gonna do is, I have one of two ways that I'm gonna do this. First, I'm gonna put a, a coil, okay? And I'm gonna run a coil through and place it at the bottom of the container and coil it through. So I'll have a hole on, on this side over here. Um, this brown area is my coil inside of the container, okay? So I'm gonna have a um, piece of tubing going in here, then the coil's gonna be wrapped around, and then um, I'm gonna drop it down through the bottom or the side. I'll have to figure it out. I might even like have an exit over in the same area that it came out. That's probably what I'll do. So I think that'll work best. Um, but, so I'm gonna have that, that copper coil resting against the base of the container, the double insulated container. Then after I have the coil in, what I'm gonna do um, is I am going to cut out a, pe a uh, an aluminum plate because aluminum um, absorb or uh, it, it ref refracts whatever you would call it heat really well that's why they use aluminum for heat sinks and stuff on circuit boards so it'll absorb the heat very well and then transfer it to the gasoline I'm gonna try it a couple of ways first I'm going to try it with a liquid gasoline. I'm gonna put just a small amount of gasoline in the bottom of the container. Um, oh, by the way, this coil is gonna be connected to the uh, coolant line that goes to my heater core, so it's gonna be really hot once when my car's warm. I'm also gonna install um, like a glow plug or something to, to preheat my gas when it's cold outside or when I'm just starting my car to heat up the gas so that it vaporizes it through heat. And then once my car's warmed up, I'll have a shut off um, switch to turn that off and it will all run through the heat coming from the coolant line um, So there's gonna be uh, so, so I'm going to either um, Yes, son Yes, you can Sorry, my son was asking if you come out you got in trouble um, Okay, anyway, so I'm gonna have try liquid first and it's gonna vaporize it like it did um, with the heat coming from my engine in the PVC container that I had. And I'm also going to run a uh, fuel injection line down through the container and I'll probably have a, a, a another coil and have a bunch of really fine, 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 super fine holes drilled in the bottom of it to shoot the, uh, to spray the gas out in a really fine mist onto this hot aluminum surface. Um, I'm gonna do both to see which works best. I know that by using, um, by sprinkling, um, by spraying gas onto a hot plate, it'll instantly vaporize the gas, and then you don't have the problem of buildup of the additives. I haven't had much of a problem with that yet, but uh, I'm sure it will be a problem. Um, so instantly vaporizing everything, instantaneously cracking the gas, as Peter says. Um, by the way, he has some really good work. Um, you guys should check out his videos. Um, I'll have to go inside and get his uh, YouTube name, but he has some great um, some great videos on this stuff. So, anyways, so I'm gonna crack the glass um, by having this aluminum plate superheated from my uh, um, the coil going through with the with the hot coolant circulating through it. Um, and I'm, and I'm gonna try the liquid gasoline, so See if I can get a better zoom and this thing's just not wanting to focus very well Probably doesn't help that I'm shaking Let's see if I can Might be due to the light outside anyway. Oh, well, I'll just show it Okay, so I have a double insulated container um, coming in through the top. I may do it through the side. We'll see um, I'm gonna have this this pipe going down through the top and I'm gonna have it so that when this air suction is sucked through it'll circulate through my chamber and pull up all the vapors that are coming off from um, the heat that's vaporizing the gasoline. Now it's gonna be pulled out this outlet pipe and connected to the air intake on my car as you have seen my other design. 
Okay, so that's all it's going to be. The coolant line circulating around, heating up the, the aluminum plate. Um, I am going to uh, fix the aluminum plate there, like weld it to the container um, or something like that or epoxy it. Whatever works, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then that's going to go into my engine and then I will have a consistent heat all the time. Um, whether it's cold outside, hot outside, because it's going to be an insulated container. Um, and so it will be enough heat and I can say that because um, from the tests that I've done just from the heat coming off of my engine heating up my PVC container that was enough to vaporize the gasoline through heat um, it worked really well obviously as you guys um, can see from the results that I got now, when I do the next mileage tests and stuff I'm going to record it so I have data that you guys can follow um, I will videotape it, me measuring the gas out, pouring it into my container, going on um, doing my test runs, and then coming back and dumping it out to measure it, the amount that I used. So, look forward to that. Okay, one other thing that I did not mention is, uh, it's, it's just crazy how things work out, guys. I've been thinking about this really, really hard. Um, before I even started researching other people's information, I, I had a lot of ideas, and the coil idea was one of them. Um, I hadn't even watched some of the other videos um, from like 150 a mile per gallon car. Um, I'll have to go in and get all the YouTube um, pages that I got some information from. And I had discovered some of that that, that these some of these tests had already been done. Um, and it's just so crazy that that people from clear across the country without even knowing can develop the same type of things and have the same type of ideas um it's just an awesome thing because this is the idea that i had to preheat my gas um what i wanted to do is tie into my fuel line um and tie an aluminum um tubing into my existing vinyl to uh, vinyl um fuel line and then I, I'm going to uh, wrap the uh, an aluminum piece of aluminum tubing around my exhaust pipe, just where it comes out of my engine, my exhaust manifold, um, before it hits the catalytic converter. And I'm going to make several wraps around that so that as the gas passes comes from my gas tank, it passes around that coil that's placed on the exhaust pipe and it was is going to preheat the gas before it even enters my container my vaporizer container so it's already going to be hot and then being um, placed on this hot surface it's going to allow it to vaporize that much easier so that's uh, pretty much my design guys um, I'm kind of running out of time for this video because I can't post videos more than 15 minutes like I said before um so that's my design um go ahead and give me your input and uh let me know what you guys think and and give me advice you know ask questions uh, i love answering people's questions and i love learning things um i can't do this alone guys um, this is a team effort from all of you around the world um, and we can do it together i know that we can do it together so one other comment i want to make is my system is under vacuum. It's not a true vacuum because it's not a sealed container and, and having everything completely sucked out of it, but it still is in a state of a vacuum. And the boiling point of liquid goes down dramatically. Uh, I think water can, the boiling point of water in a vacuum is like 40 degrees, something like that. Um, and it works the same way with gasoline. So that, I believe that's why I was able to vaporize my gasoline so easily um, when it was heated up from my engine. Um, because the boiling point is much lower and so it creates vapors easier um, but anyway guys I'm running out of time better stop it before I get too far ahead of myself and this is Tyson with HHO for life peace out you guys have fun take care be safe um, comment subscribe and share please please share this information all right take care guys later